The Jack Benny Program, transcribed, presented by Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. It's fun to be a traffic cop when you are in the know. You tell all other brands to stop, but Lucky's get the go. I sell all brands of cigarettes. I know what people buy. That Lucky pack so mild and rich, it's got a red bull's eye. Be happy, go Lucky. Be happy, go Lucky Strike. Be happy, go Lucky. Go Lucky Strike today. Enjoy your cigarette. Enjoy truly fine tobacco that combines both perfect mildness and rich taste in one great cigarette, Lucky Strike. For only fine tobacco gives you both perfect mildness and rich taste. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So friends, be happy, go lucky. Try a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky, strike, be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Barry Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, next Saturday night, Jack Benny does his opening television show from New York City. So let's go out to Jack's home in Beverly Hills, where we find him packing for the trip. Mary and Rochester are helping him. Now let's see, I'll be gone for 12 days. I'll need two pairs of shorts, two shirts, <laughs> two pairs of socks, two handkerchiefs, and a box of does. <laughs> Close the bag, Rochester. Yes, sir. Uh, wait a minute, Jack. You're going to be gone 12 days, and that's all you're taking? Mary, I'm going by plane. I have to be careful about the weight. You know, they charge you extra if your luggage weighs over 40 pounds. It's 79 cents a pound in New York. <laughs> Unless you get off at Chicago, then it's 57 cents. <laughs> <laughs> or Kansas City, it's 46 cents. <laughs> Well, why don't you go to New York and send your clothes to Albuquerque? <laughs> Say, maybe... Oh, stop. But, Jack, aren't you taking any extra suits? Certainly. I'm taking my blue serge, my tweed, my herringbone, my pinstripe, and my gabardine. Well, that's five suits. I don't see any of them in the bag. He's wearing them. They don't weigh the passengers. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. <laughs> Hello, Polly. Say, Mary, I've been talking to Polly about my trip. Watch this. Polly, Polly, where's Daddy going? East side, west side, all around the town. <laughs> That's right. That's right, New York. Now, what is Daddy going to New York for? Tell her. Tell her. Go on, go on. Tell her. Tell her. Tell her what? Telephone. <laughs> <laughs> Rochester, take the cracker out of her cage. Television, video, TV. <laughs> That's better. Oh, boss, I forgot to pack your tuxedo. Here it is. Uh, put it in the fortniter. Jack, you're not taking that old tuxedo to New York, are you? I certainly am. But look at it. The pants are baggy and the coat is so short, it looks like a battle jacket. Well, that's the latest style. I know, but this one looks like, like it, it lost, lost a battle. Like it lost a battle, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. Anyway, I'm taking that tuxedo to New York and I'm going to wear it on my first television show. Well, Jack, if you do, it'll be awfully confusing. Why? You'll be on live and that tuxedo looks like kinescope. <laughs> kinescope, kinescope. You think you're smart because I haven't got an answer written here. <laughs> Mary. <laughs> Mary, listen, yes. I have a sentimental feeling about this tuxedo. It's been with me since my start in show business. Well, why is the right pocket so much bigger than the left? That's where I kept the fish to feed my seal. Any more questions? <laughs> Now, come on, help me with these. Come in. Oh, hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Hello, Dennis. How do you feel? 
Boy, am I tired. I pushed my car all the way over here from Hollywood. Uh, pushed your car? Why? The motor was broken and it wouldn't run. Well, if your car isn't running, why didn't you leave it in Hollywood? I wouldn't have any way to get home. <laughs> Look, kid, I'm leaving for New York and I haven't time for a visit. Now, why'd you come over here? Oh, there's something very important I have to see you about. It's been on my mind all day. What is it? Well... Well, what? Gee, I forgot. <laughs> well, maybe you'll think of it later. Now, let's see my shirts, my socks. Uh, Dennis, did you want to ask Jack something about next week's show? No. Oh, see. was it something about a song that you're going to sing? No. Mary, let's get on with the packing, will oh, you? Oh, I know what I was going to ask you. What? Can you lend me $50,000? <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, I've got my socks, <laughs> my handkerchiefs, and... I'm in a hurry, kid. How about it? <laughs> Dennis, leave me alone. Dennis, what in the world do you want with $50,000? I'm going into business. Business? What kind of business? Well, I'm going to manufacture little round candy mints and call them lifesavers. <laughs> now, let's see, I have my shirt... <laughs> Shoes, socks, underwear. I'm going to sell them for a nickel a package. Dennis, Dennis, this might be news to you. A little round candy mint called Life Savers has been on the market for years. I know. Look at all the free advertising I'll get. <laughs> Shoes, socks, underwear. Dennis. It's all right to manufacture candy, but what made you think of calling it lightsabers? Mary, with his head, it's only natural he'd think of something with a hole in it. <laughs> now, look, Dennis, you came over here. Let me hear the song you're going to do on the show, so forget about lightsabers and sing it. Yes, sir. Now, what are you going to sing? You were meant for me. Now, cut that <laughs> Now, sing the one you're supposed to. I got everything? I'll be going out nights in New York, maybe rainy and chilly, so maybe I better not take any chances. Uh, Rochester, how much does my raincoat weigh? Weighs about a pound. A pound extra costs 79 cents. <laughs> hmm. Shall I put in the raincoat? No, just throw in a four-way cold tablet. <laughs> <laughs> I 
that'll do it. Come in. Hiya, Jackson. Como se va, Libby? <laughs> hello, Phil. Hello, Phil. Hey, you, you said hello before the door opened, but it was all right. <laughs> it's all right, Phil. It doesn't make any difference. I heard you. <laughs> what is Good it, Phil? Answer, I ain't getting paid anyway. <laughs> hey, Jack, there's that suitcase you wanted. Oh, thanks, Phil. Mine is so shabby. I'm glad you brought your bag over. Jack, get a load of those labels on it. Yeah, I used to take it with me when I was on the road playing on one-night stands. Oh. <laughs> hey, Jack, look at this label here. Ritz Carlton Hotel, Empty Jug, Texas. <laughs> Empty Jug, Texas? I killed him in that town. <laughs> I never heard of the place. Where is Empty Jug, Phil? It's about 50 miles this side of Rackham Up, Arkansas. <laughs> Oh, fine. Empty jug, rack them up. Well, I better run along, Jackson. I gotta go to the doctor. Why? What's wrong, Phil? Well, ever since yesterday, I've had an upset stomach. Well, maybe it's something you ate. Oh, boss, calm down! <laughs> <laughs> yes, I guess you're right, Rochester. So long, Jackson. Have a good time. Goodbye, Phil. <laughs> what a character. He always makes up those silly names of towns like Empty Jug. Hey, Jackson, your taxi's outside. Good, good. Hey, did I ever tell you about the time my band played Mish Mosh, Arizona? <laughs> no, and I haven't got time now. Goodbye. Uh, Come on, Rochester, get the luggage. We have to hurry to the airport. <laughs> Say, uh, mister, shall I go by the way of Sepulveda? Yes, driver. You comfortable, Mary? Yes, thanks. Good. It's a pretty long ride. Uh, how far is it from your house to the airport? Two dollars and forty cents. <laughs> <laughs> That's if you stop at the first entrance, you see. Otherwise, it's... Uh... Uh, by the way, Jack, you haven't told me where you'll be staying while you're in New York. The same place, Mary, the Acme Plaza Hotel. I always stay there. Oh, my goodness, Jack. After the long lecture I gave you last week about being cheap, why must you always stay at an awful joint like the Acme Plaza? I'll tell you why, Mary. For sentimental reasons. Many years ago, when I was trying to get a start in vaudeville, and I had no place to stay and nothing to eat, and I couldn't find a job, the Acme Plaza let me stay there and fed me for nothing. They did that because they knew I was unemployed. Oh, gee, Jack, I didn't know that. If they're that nice, next time I go to New York, I'm going to stay there, too. Okay, but don't tell them I'm working now. <laughs> you know, they'd, they'd feel disappointed. Rochester, have you got all the bags? Yes, boss. Uh, Jack, you better go in and have your ticket validated. You have much time. That's right. Flight number 76 for Phoenix, Memphis, and Washington, D.C., now loading at gate two. Now, let's see. Where do I go here? Attention. Flight number 83, now arriving <laughs> from Fort Worth, Galveston, San Antonio, and Empty Jug. <laughs> See, there is such a place. <laughs> Say, Mary, before I get my ticket validated, I want to go over to the fruit stand and buy some fruit. Watch my luggage, will you? Okay. Hiya, bud. Long time no see. <laughs> huh? Oh, hello. Uh, Jack, who was that? You remember, it's that racetrack tout who always drives me nuts. I won't be long, Mary. Okay. Flight number 19, now loading at gate 5 for Anaheim, Azusa, and Cucamonga. <laughs> Attention, passengers getting off at Cucamonga. Watch your step. We do not stop there. <laughs> Well, let's see. 
Now, let's see. Where's the fruit stand? Hello, Mr. Benny. Well, hello, Mr. Pitcher. Well, are you, are you leaving town, Mr. Kitzel? No, I'm waiting for my wife to arrive. She's coming in by plane from Dallas, Texas. Oh, oh, what time is she due? In ten minutes. But I don't know whether her plane is going to land here or at Lockheed or in Pomona or in Pasadena. Well, isn't the plane scheduled to land here? Yes, but my wife is such a backseat driver. <laughs> Oh, you're kidding. Kidding, Kisser. <laughs> Believe me, Mr. Benny, when that sweet chariot swings low, she'll point the direction. Well, you ought to know. What was your wife doing in Dallas? She was visiting our son in college. Why, Mr. Kitzel, I never knew you had a grown boy. He's my wife's son by a former marriage. Oh, oh, your wi- you're your wife's second husband. Her third. <laughs> you mean your wife's been married twice before? This much, she tells me. <laughs> oh, well, what, what college does your boy go to? The same one I attended, Southern Methodist. <laughs> Well, look, look, Mr. Kitzel. Attention, please. Flight 14, scheduled to arrive here from Dallas, will land at San Francisco instead. Uh-huh. <laughs> yes, yes, that's my wife. She done it again. <laughs> Goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. Goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. Let's see, what did I want to get? Oh, yes, the fruit stand. Attention, please, attention. The Santa Fe Super Chief now landing on runway seven. (laughs) Super Chief? How can that be? It was awfully windy in Barstow. (laughs) Oh. uh. Well, I think I'll get a magazine, too. I don't want to sleep anyway. So I might oh, just... Jack, Jack! Oh, hello, Don. Are you all set to go? Yes, sir. We ought to have a lot of fun in New York this time, huh, Jack? I think so, Don. We always do. You think you'll run into Fred Allen? Could be. We'll be in New York on Halloween, and that's the night he rides. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly killed that one, but I didn't. <laughs> just caught it. By the way, Don... Oh, Don, Don, yes. where's the sportsman quartet? Oh, they're on a different flight than we are, Jack, and they're on the plane already. The sportsmen are on the plane? Yeah, they're on that one over there, those four girls and their wives saying goodbye to them. Oh, yeah. Bye-bye, babies. Remember, you're our babies when they give you the eye. Although we know that you care, won't you write and declare that though on the loose, you are still on the square. We'll be true, dear, to luckies and to you, dear. Don't you worry and fret. You know we'll love every pup, cause no pup's ever up, dear. They're our favorite cigarettes. We'll buy luckies, buy nothing else but luckies. Listen, we'll tell you why. For real enjoyment and fun, lucky strike is the best. So mild and so light that they pass every test. We'll buy luckies, buy nothing. But luckies we'll be smoking in style So you'll be gone for a while Be happy and go lucky You'll be smoking with a smile Smoking lucky all the Go 
the sportsman. By the way, Don, Don, where are you going to live uh, in New York? At the Sherry Netherlands. The Sherry Netherlands? Isn't, uh, isn't that expensive? No, I wouldn't say so. You can get a nice suite there for $18 or $20 a day. Oh, 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 well, that, that isn't bad. Oh, I'll see you on the plane, Jack. Uh, yes, yes. $18 or $20 a day. Big fat show off. <laughs> get some, uh... oh, here, here's the fruit stand. Now, let's see, I think I'll take some of these apples. They look good. Next week is National Apple Week, too. Oh, miss, miss. Oh, darn it, she's busy. Well, I'll just have to wait. Hey, Bun. <laughs> bun. Huh? Come here a minute. <laughs> Look, fella, I... What are you doing? I'm buying some fruit. What kind? <laughs> uh, apples. Uh-uh. <laughs> what? Take oranges. Well, I, I don't want oranges. How about grapes? Haven't got a chance. <laughs> They're carrying too many seeds. <laughs> oh. Well, what about bananas? Lay off the bananas. Why? I've been watching them for three days. I have yet to see one of them get out of the bunch. <laughs> I don't know. I wanted apples when I came in here. So all I wanted was apples. Huh? Listen to me, bud. Take the oranges. The oranges? Well, just look at the breeding. Out of Pomona by Smudge Pot. <laughs> well, I wanted apples, but maybe you're right. Uh, maybe you're... I'll take the oranges. Okay. And... Peel them. Don't be a sucker. <laughs> why, why does that guy always pick on me? Want apple? Attention, flight 21 scheduled to arrive from Salt Lake City, Las Vegas, and Palm Springs has been canceled. The pilot lost the plane in Las Vegas. <laughs> Gee, I, I haven't much time. I better get my ticket validated. Now, let's see. Where's the window? Oh, there it is. Uh, pardon me, mister. I'm Jack Benny. Are you the validating clerk? Well, who do you think I am behind these bars? Your agent? <laughs> Never mind. Just validate my ticket. Thanks. Now, how long will it take Flight 12 to get to New York? It's three days. <laughs> three days? Why so long? Gary Cooper will be aboard and he drags his feet. <laughs> oh, don't be so smart. Now, look, isn't there a faster plane than mine to New York? Well, we have two flights leaving for New York at midnight, flights 11 and 12. On flight 12, the tickets cost $180. And on flight 11, the tickets cost $19. Yeah. Gee, why the big difference? Flight 11 is a U drive. <laughs> I wouldn't want that one. Anyway, I'm on flight number 12. Is that usually a smooth trip? They're all very smooth. Oh, then I won't get sick. No, but whoever sits next to you will. <laughs> now, just a minute. I've, I've taken about all I'm going to take from you. Now, give me your number. I'm going to have you fired. Oh, please. Please don't. I'm sorry I offended you. Don't get me fired. I have a big family to support. If I'm out of work, my wife and five children will starve. <laughs> well, all right then, I won't report you. But I'll bet you're just making the whole thing up. Ooh, Amber! <laughs> well, 
that does it. I'd punch you right in the nose if I didn't have to take off five coats. <laughs> now, I'm going to see Attention. that... Attention. Passengers for Flight 12 to New York may now board the plane. Jack, Jack, that's your call. You better hurry. Coming, Mary, coming. Attention. Attention, please. Flight 21 from Las Vegas, which was canceled, is coming in on schedule. The pilot finally made a DC-6 the hard way. <laughs> is everything all set, Rochester? The man is weighing your bags now. Oh, good. Attention, please. Flight 22 now leaving for San Joaquin Valley, Sun Valley, Imperial Valley, and Apple Valley. Hey, bud. Bud. Huh? Come here a minute. <laughs> oh, attention, please. Flight 22 now leaving for San Joaquin Valley, Sun Valley, Imperial Valley, and Orange, New Jersey. <laughs> what? Well, I gotta go. Come on, sweetie, give me a kiss. Look, mister, don't get fresh with me. Mary, it's me. The propeller blew it off. <laughs> Give me a kiss. Goodbye, Mary. Goodbye, Jack. See you in New York. Goodbye. Jack will be back in just a minute, but first... Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. I keep a lighthouse by the sea to guide all those astray. It tells them to get Lucky Strike and light up one today. A secretary has to know where everything is filed. And Lucky Strike goes under M because it's really mild. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, go Lucky Strike today. Yes, friends, be happy, go lucky, enjoy your cigarettes. Puff by puff, you'll find Lucky's always give you perfect mildness. In fact, scientific tests confirmed by three independent consulting laboratories prove Lucky Strike is milder than any other principal brand. And puff by puff, you always get rich taste, too. All the deep-down smoking enjoyment that comes from truly fine tobacco. Because LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. So, friends, be happy. Go Lucky. Try a carton of Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, be happy, go lucky strike. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky strike today. Say, Don, this is a nice, smooth trip, isn't it? Uh, it certainly is, Jack. By the way, uh, who's going to be on our television show? Well, beside you and me, it's going to be Rochester, Mr. Kitzel, Mel Blanc, the Sportsman Quartet, and our guest star, Dinah Shore. Dinah Shore? Well, isn't she expensive? No, Don, she's nuts about me. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, do you know who's going to be our guest on next Sunday's radio show? Who? My next door neighbors, Mr. and Mrs. Ronald Coleman. Well, aren't they kind of expensive, too? Uh, not this time. I promised them I'd move. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Don. I'm going to sleep. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, figures show that each day last year, 1,100 American homes had a fire. You can stop fire in your own home by using just a little care. Don't smoke in bed. Have heating and electrical equipment repaired promptly. Fire prevention is your job. Thank you.